This is uh, GM faction turn number nine. Uh, we do these uh, more or less every in-game month uh, or when an adventure gets completed in role plays Swan Song. Uh, Swan Song is a game of Stars Without Number. Stars Without Number has a system for uh, us as GMs to control all of the Machiavellian plotting that uh, is happening in the background of the universe. So um, what I've decided to do today is I'm just going to do one month. Uh, In-game it is October 3200 right now. But it's only the beginning, kind of the beginning of October uh, ish, or getting to the end of October. So I don't want to, I don't want to like do two full turns because I think that's a lot of stuff to do. But what I do want to do is add in some new factions. So if you're, you know, peering at the spreadsheet, you can kind of see where I've already started to do that. Um, in our last turn, well, let's 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 start with the review, shall we? So let's let's get over here and we'll take a look at what happened last time. So in August. Uh, oh, again, uh, spoilers. Spoilers like crazy. Um, we're going to talk about a lot of things that are happening in the universe. And I might, I'm, I mean, I'm going to talk about stuff that happened in Swan Song, and you might hear things that you missed. So I'm sorry if that's a thing that happens to you. Um, I'll understand if you want to wait and watch this on YouTube. Won't, won't break my heart. Um, so for August of the year 3200, uh, we saw a few things happen. So Richardson Scientific, um, they moved some security personnel to, uh, to Andoni. Um, so Andoni, as we know, got blowed up and its government was replaced by uh, military forces. They're not really the government anymore. There's a lot of kind of loose governmental stuff. And um, well, that's, I mean, that's how it goes. So it's all sort of post-apocalypse down there. But we also know that Andoni is covered in what we've now learned are alien relics. Alien artificial intelligence relics, too. The Warmind is from there. Pi is from there. The, the, this ancient alien race had uh, a colony on Andoni, and they left a bunch of their ship behind. Um, so what's happening is there's a bunch of chaos there, and people are moving in. So Richardson moved some personnel there to kind of get a hold of, of that stuff. Their new goal is to expand influence. So they're going to try to expand right onto that planet. Uh, they want to get a foothold on Andoni. You're going to learn, so does everybody else. Uh, the Purity Initiative, they seized control uh, of uh, Planet Oninsa finally after a bloody civil war. I mean, it's been going on since February, right? So March, February, March, April, May, June, July, August. Like, significant battle uh, on this planet. And finally, with their insidious influence and the help of the Photonhauer Society, Purity Initiative has seize control, and these guys now run Planet Oninsa. Um, we remember they hate drugs, and they hate cyborgs. Uh, they're all about human purity. Uh, so, cool. They're in charge. Um, the Photonhauer Society, they blew up the, the last of the Oninsa Libre troops. Uh, their goal is to blood the enemy, so they're going to go after Oninsa Libre systems now. They're going to go in there, and they're going to start, like, blowing up buildings and destroying infrastructure, and they, they want to put the Oninsa Libre faction just, like, out of their misery forever. They want to get rid of them. So they're on a, they're on a, a tear. Um, I'm also adding a new faction called the Republic of Cabral. Uh, the Republic of Cabral is where uh, Prosper is from. Uh, they had a powerful civil war recently, and what ended up happening was uh, the this new faction led by uh, an entity or person uh, known as Le Phantom uh, has taken over. And Prosper, uh, Prosper Trudeau, is part of the military arm of the government called the Order of Annunciation. And the Order of the Annunciation goes out into the world and finds and keeps tags on uh, other artificial intelligence. So, kind of a big deal. Uh, so... I wanted to add them because I think that the characters are going to go there, and I think that everyone is starting to see some stuff interrelate. Um, I have them in my mind as a sort of post-revolutionary uh, France. So, like, um, you know, they've just ousted their, their like, leaders. They're, they've restored the government, and they're moving into the future. Um, so that's, that's the thing there. So 
Um, Onitsu Libre, uh, they are limper. They're, they're like, look at them. They're, they're limping towards their own demise. Like, watch. They like failed a bunch of attacks. They were attacked a bunch of times. They, they're losing all their units. They're building up uh, new units and then having them smashed again. Um, I think they're going to die this turn. Uh, they, they have some plans for them, but I, I think that they're going to get killed. Um, the uh, Order of the New Prophet, uh, these, these guys, they're a religion. Uh, right now, they're engaged in a pretty significant fight with uh, Majid, the Manjidi Mandaranate, um, because they sent, uh, the Mandaranate sent a, a unit to unstealth their, their demagogue, their like, high religious dude. Uh, it failed, but the demagogue was so like ready to get rid of, of Nika, uh, Nika Starlight, their like stealth unit. So she's like a pop musician, but she's actually an assassin. We'll talk about that later. Anyway, uh, so he came out publicly, revealed himself, and was like, bah, down with, down with Nika Starlight. It almost killed her, but now he's exposed. So the Majidi Mandarinate bought some cyber ninjas, and they are ready to go and assassinate the demagogue of the new prophet. So, pretty serious shit. Um, the Madari Syndicate, we've noticed they, they just completed a goal. Literally, all they've been doing all year is making drugs. Drugs, 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 all day, every day. So now that they have that done, they want to start inserting agents into other enemy territories to see where they can find um, plots. Um, so they inserted some cyber ninjas into Majid. So there's a little Cold War, like Madari, Majidi thing there. The cyber ninjas got moved there. Uh, I'm going to buy them some more stealth things. The great thing about the Madari Syndicate is everything they buy is in stealth mode. Uh, we're going to add two more factions. We're going to add the Hovaden Caliphate. Uh, now the Caliphate, we don't know anything about uh, Hoveda yet, except that it's the most populous set, uh, system in the whole sector. It has billions and billions of people in it. I see the Caliphate as being kind of a like largish empire. Um, so we're going to add them now. I want to start seeing them come up. They're also in a position to combat the newly powerful um, uh, Sunbeam, uh, who I also removed and need to replace. Um, so let's let's actually do that now before I forget. So Sunbeam Multistellar. Sunbeam Multistellar used to be uh, Sunbeam, uh, or Sunbeam Omnistellar used to be Sunbeam Multistellar, and they they incorporated Zimenez after the big war, and Andoni got blown up, and now they're basically the single largest ship parts and fleet supplier in the whole sector, uh, and so the um, the the Caliphate I'm setting them up as kind of a competition with a Sunbeam. Um, I also think Sunbeam is becoming more important as the um, uh, stuff with Asa becomes more relevant. Uh, we've seen some NPCs from Asa. We know a little bit more about Asa. So, yeah, Sunbeam, big omni-stellar monopoly. Probably bad news for the characters. But I want um, this Islamic uh, sort of priest-emperor thing uh, to, uh, yeah, get in there. Okay. Uh, and then also we've got uh, the High Beam Fleet, who we all know are a bunch of no-good, dirty pirates. And the Andonian Armed Forces Remnant. And the Armed Forces Remnant, the last turn, they uh, they just healed their infantry. Uh, and so they're they're going to try and get a hold of their, uh, of their planet a little better than they currently have. Um, so you can see we've got lots of cool stuff that we can do. Um, what I want to do first is add in my new factions. So I'm going to pop back over to my other spreadsheet. Got the Republic of Cabral, the High Beam, High Beam, High Beam Fleet, and the Hovaden Caliphate all ready to go. Um, I also added another line for the Purity Initiative because they, they've seized control of the planet, and I had no other way to add another tag. So Purity is both fanatics and uh, planetary government. Um, I also changed the Armed Forces Remnant tag to be warlike because they're not actually in charge of Andoni and we're going to need them uh, to have a new goal. Uh, I think that's all of the planetary shuffling that we need to um, we needed to do. Cool. All right. So um, I'm going to I'm going to start with the Republic of Cabral. And I'll walk you guys through, because if you if you haven't seen this before, if, if this is your first episode or you didn't tune into the, the episodes on YouTube, um, this is 
probably your first exposure to creating new factions. So to create a new faction, the first thing that we do is we decide uh, what planets uh, they have a, uh, a base on. So I'm gonna actually open up, uh, I'm gonna open up a, uh, another HTML doc here. Just give me one second. There we go. So this is my little Sector Asgard Sigma GM version of the uh, of the map. Now, you uh, you might have seen something like this. There's a PC facing one that I, I handed out, um, and you know that's cool and stuff. But I get to see all kinds of fancy crap about these. So like Cabral, I mean. If we ignore all the red stuff, the players know that it's a breathable planet and it's temperate and human missable biosphere and tech line four. But I know it's a police state with an unbraked AI in charge. I've known that since day one, right? Cabral, this has been true of Cabral since before we started playing because I generated all this stuff back in June. So, yep. Um, so let's let's make these guys. I think that they're a pretty big deal. Um, we're gonna make them a maybe a minor. Let's see. My three options for creating a faction are um, let's see, minor, major, or regional. So I'm gonna make these guys a um, major sector power. So that means that I give them. Uh, well, I'm gonna pick, I'll pick some bases. So we'll do that first. Let's get back over to my spreadsheet. So on my asset tracker, I'm gonna add in Republic of Cabral. Now I know that they've got a hand where some other stuff uh, that, that has happened. Um, I'm gonna add them to more than one planet when I build their, their, their base. So I'm gonna put them, let's see, base of influence. Okay, this is actually not wealth. We just have to fill it with something. It's a it's special type, but that's fine. Um, and this will pull data from their from their assets and all that stuff. We'll figure it out uh, later. Um, but I need to decide where they are. So there's two uh, there's two ver places that I want to put them. We're gonna put them on Farugi, uh, which is where their actual home world is. So let me find that here. So the Farugi system, they're on Cabral. It's grid 602. So 602. And the system is Fruity and Cabral. Okay, cool. So that's their main base. Now, they've had stealth agents on Andoni since the beginning because they knew. They knew what was going on. So I'm going to add that as well. They've had this secret base. Um, we're also going to stealth it. So what I'm doing now is I'm, I'm adding in assets to the factions, but I'm going to be making some changes to the way the process works simply because what I'm doing is um, I'm bending the rules a bit for things that we know about the, about the world, right? So you, you're allowed to do this as a, as a GM. You can, uh, you can insert you know, certain things that, um, you know, may not be strictly to the rules in the same way that the players can affect things and that, um, you know, uh, we can have stuff in the fiction get changed uh, by the, um, the back end stuff, so. All right, so they've got a hidden Andonian base. Didn't get blown up. It was a hardened stealth base or something. Um, so we decide that um, and here, I'm going to copy this base of influence tag because I like having the notes. There we go. And maybe this maybe this base was here all along and it was like a sleeper base or something. Um, here we go. All right, so we'll come back to this. So we'll just put them in, we'll put them in those two uh, areas first and then we'll come back and, and see. Um, See if there's anywhere else that they should they should go. Um, I can always have them be revealed later. So if another planet comes up that's been like, oh, there's a whole bunch of like, um, you know, there's a whole bunch of things that uh, that have to do with AI on this planet, I can pretend that the Republic has had a base there for a while. Um, cool. Okay. So we're gonna say these guys get a. Um, 
a six in their most powerful, their most relevant um, stat. So we're going to say six. And then they get half that uh, in. Oh, no, the second most important is one less. So they're going to be six, five, and uh, three, I think, for a well. No, we'll say three and five, like that. Yeah, OK, cool. So that auto fills my HP. Uh, that also means that in the asset tracker, their main base, their home base, uh, has 29 hit points. 29 hit points. And I'm going to give this base 12 hit points, because it's an important base. Um, and you know what? Let's let's represent some damage. Let's say it's got six hit points right now. So it was damaged by the bombardment, but it's still there. Okay. So I've done that. Uh, that automatically generates the hit points. Um, I give them uh, one asset. I'm just gonna make a note because I gotta do this a few more times. One asset in their primary attribute, and one in a. Uh, no, it's two and two. Yeah. So two and two for these guys. Two in their primary, and two in some other. OK. So I got to pick assets for these dudes. And the rules for choosing assets are they can only be up to the, um, the number of their stat. So I'm going to pick Cunning and Wealth primarily for, uh, for these characters. Um, and uh, for these guys, and we'll go from, uh, from there. Uh, so let's take a look at the assets. So the Republic of Cabral probably has Let's see, Cunning 6. Covert Transit Knit, that's pretty cool. Organization Moles. Now remember, these are, um, they all have um, like cyborgs and high tech, but not like high space tech. They just have high, um, like high technology for, uh, for specific stuff. Um, so I'm gonna give them, God, I feel like they have a demagogue too. Because they're, they're like a religious organization. That's pretty cool. I feel like that's a thing. Um, yeah, let's give them a demagogue. So I'll pop back to my asset tracker. Uh, Republic of Crawl. I got to do four total, so I'll set those up now. OK, and I got a demagogue. So there we go, fills in for me automatically. And the demagogue is on Farugi. So this is like the president or or whatever. Uh, it might even this this might just be Le Phantom. Okay. And that's on Cabral. And where's my other demagogue? I want to grab the note from that one. Yeah, here we go. Oops. It's one thing that I wish was easier on these spreadsheets so I could just add these. Cool. All right. So demagogue there. Um, and they also have one other cunning. So let's see what else we got for cunning. Um, I want to buy them something. So like a military bolt hole, that doesn't sound very good. Like Vanguard cadre. No, it's I mean it's the government. Let's buy them a party machine. We'll go we'll go straightforward and simple for this right now. Uh, so find party machine on the list. Cause you gotta get that party machine. And I think some other folks have that too. Uh, party. Period initiative. They have a party machine, don't they? Yeah, they do. Party machine, it's good. So this represents the government, the leader and the government of Cabral. Uh, what I'm gonna do with the other ones is I'm gonna pick the, uh, probably one to represent the orders, military arm and something else, like for their, their space. So we'll, uh, we'll find that too. Um, okay, party machine, there we go. And then they get two more. Um, they get one in each of their other assets or two in another one. And so these guys, they're going to want wealth and force. So five and three for wealth and force. So 
Let's see. Elite Skirmishers. Zealots. Oh, counterintelligence unit. Yeah. No, this is good. So a counterintelligence unit to defend them from uh, other people trying to find out about AI. I think that's really good. So let's do counterintelligence unit. And we haven't done a note for them before, so I'm going to see if I can grab that right here. Counterintelligence unit. That's your notes. All right, so like code breakers and, and stuff like that. OK, and then um, we want to add in one more. And let's see what we can do for wealth, maybe. Now, it doesn't mean that they don't have, like if I don't pick like spaceships, it doesn't mean that they don't have them. It just means they're not a significant part of their um, their their ongoing stuff, right? So they have pre-tech researchers, I think. And it treats, so these guys, it allows them to treat any planet as tech level five. Uh, so I think Le Fantôme is helping them with their science. I'm going to do that. So pre-tech researchers. Sounds just about perfect to me. Let's grab that note. All righty. There we go. OK, so I think the party machine, I think all of these things are on Cabral right now. And we'll uh, we'll buy up more of them later. Cool. All right. So pre-tech researchers cost one fact cred per turn. So I'm going to make a note here for income. Minus one fact cred per turn. Oops. Four researchers. There we go. Cool. All right, so these guys are going to need some money. So once uh, once I've added uh, added one asset, they've got two assets in their primary attribute and two assets in their other attributes, um, we're going to select an appropriate tag. So let's look at the tags. Uh, they're not colonists. They're pretty deep-rooted on their home world. That's kind of cool. Um, Imperialists, they seize other planets. They're not the perimeter agency, they are the opposite of that shit. They get planetary government for free. Oh, that's cool. Preceptor archive. Yep. Yep. It's gonna use those two. Okay. Preceptor Archive, that allows them to train up TL3 worlds. So it it builds it up, right? So um, <laughs> so this is neutralized, that note. Uh, Party Machine and, thank you, Math Squad. So these neutralize each other out. They don't count. Cool. Anyway, Preceptor Archive will allow them to... Um, spend less on their assets, and then also uh, they can teach planetary populations to uh, potentially improve to four um, for that faction. So these guys are pretty cool. Um, I'm also going to give them planetary, uh, give them their planetary thingamajig. So let's bump all this crap down one. Oops, there we go. And Raiden Caliphate. Cool. And so these guys, we'll just add them in because they are the planetary government of the planet that they own. So there we go. I can copy the note from here. And that basically, planetary government just means they get to choose whether people are allowed to uh, mess around with their planet if they want to drop people there. Oops. Uh, or not. So planetary government. Copy that in. 
and we will add it to the notes. All right, there, settled. Okay, so their home world is uh, Cabral, and their goal, uh, their goal is gonna be, hmm, Mm. Yeah, right. I need to. Well, this looks right. Neutral, neutral. Thank you, Chrome. I am aware. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, there we go. Um, yeah, so anyway, um, I should be able to Just pick one of these for them. So let's take a look. Let's take a look at the goals. So military conquest is destroying force. Commercial is destroying wealth. Intelligence is destroying cunning. All of that is sort of whatever. Um, planetary seizure. That's pretty good. Becoming a leader. Uh, do we have? Uh, expand influence. Blood the enemy. Peaceable enemy or peaceable kingdom. Destroy the foe. Invincible valor. Let's take. Um, Let's take planetary seizure. And just like a bunch of other people in the universe, they want they want Andoni. And they have nothing. Okay, great. So um, these guys are now ready to go. The uh, Republic is ready. Uh, I'm not going to take a turn for these ones that I've added. Uh, I'm just going to take a turn for the other ones. But let's rip through the other two. So uh, High Beam Fleet, uh, these guys are a very big deal. Uh, they are they're everywhere. They are all over the place. So we're going to make them uh, a hegemon. Uh, so a hegemon means they get uh, eight in their main they get, uh, let's see, uh, seven in their secondary, and they get a uh, three, this five in their cunning. So the high beam fleet is a big deal. They're everywhere. We haven't seen them in a while, but they are serious business. They're literally more powerful as a group than like Fotenhauer, for example, or like Fotenhauer is the only one that could militarily like come into contact conflict with them, but they're a pirate empire. The reason why they haven't just like rolled out and taken over the universe is because they're all politically kind of like fractured. Um, so yeah, high beam, they are a big deal. Uh, I've had them kind of in mind for a while. Um, so the high beam fleet, they have 49 points right now, an income of seven. Uh, we'll just start with everybody with their regular total. Uh, these guys, they're not, they don't have, I'm not giving them um, like a bunch of bases. So they're not planetary government. Obviously, the fuck up, they're pirates, right? Tag, pirates. And then I'm going to put a bunch of little bases of influence around for them. Um, so high beam. Big deal. So I'll make a little note here. There we go. Homeworld. I gotta decide where they're from originally. Um, so I think what I want to do is let's take a look at my planetary directory here. Big, big fucking spoilers on this screen. Big, huge spoilers. So keep an eye out for that. Um, so I like the idea of them not having like one really specific base, but I want them to have bases kind of all over the north end of the of the system. So let's take a look. Let's see, Pelasgon. Yeah, let's make Pelasgon their home world. Um, yeah, OK. There we go. And we'll make their goal military conquest. Um, they have experience of zero. Okay. So yeah, 
<laughs> let's see what else is going on. Um, so High Beam Fleet, they're going to get, uh, as a Hegemon, they get four in their primary asset and four other. And they get these for free. Um, and I need to play some bases for them too. So yeah, they have the same home world as um, Fotenhauer. I actually so okay, let's let's talk about yeah, let's talk about this. Um, I think that High Beam is um, a, a f started as a military um, offshoot, as like a pirate offshoot of freebooters. Um, that used to be the Votenhauer Society. Uh, I think they're the Votenhauer Navy, and their captain was just like, Psh, we're out, we're gonna go be pirates. Spoil, 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 spoily, spoily, spoil. Um, so that's a thing. Um, yeah, the high beam, they're, they're, they're Votenhauer, or they used to be. So they, yes, of course they come from the same planet, uh, and we're gonna add that in here. So, let's see, there's high beam on my, my list here. It's odd. So this is pulling, this should be pulling from my other page. So maybe I didn't add them in correctly here. Is the Hovaden Caliphate on there too? Anyway, whatever, I'll just copy it in. Have you inflate? Awesome, the spreadsheet doesn't want me to do it. Let's insert a row and see if I can do it above. Cool, way to be buggy, spreadsheet. Um, let, me, let me try and refresh the spreadsheet. Extend the data validation range. I, if I had any idea how to do that, I would. Um, if I can, maybe if I just drag down, oops. Data validation. Oh, there it is, data validation. A51. Oh yeah, C12, okay. Um, let me see my other spreadsheet here. That's oh, just a tab, it's a faction tracker. Oh yeah, it stopped it. The, okay, so I'm gonna I'll extend it out to I'll extend it out to like eighty two to twenty five. Let's try that. Is that gonna work for me? Spreadsheet game. High beam fleet, yeah. Thank you, math. You helped. All right, so high beam gets eight uh, eight different. Why do you not autocorrect? Is that only for, oh, I gotta do it for all of these. You know, whoever made this for me, I appreciate you, but like, it's a little, it was a little short-sighted. <laughs> I'm gonna need more shit than this. All right, cool. So they get uh, eight total assets. Eight asshats, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, okay. Alrighty, and um, I need base at least one base of influence, and I think I'm gonna have two. These guys are insidious, and I know exactly where I'm gonna put them. Uh, these guys have a base of influence uh, at home, in the same place that the Fotenhauer Society does. So Fotenhauer base of influence, Pelasgon, and they've got another one. Where all the other spaceships come from. Okay, perfect. Okay, so. That means those two, I need another eight. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Awesome. All right, let's, let's see what kind of kick. Let's go shopping. Let's go shopping for the high beam fleet. Um, their total hit points. On their home world is 49 for that oops that base of influence and then I'm gonna give them 30 on the other all right and now let's look at the biggest baddest guns we can buy these dudes 
So starting with, they get four Force 8 assets. Oh, yeah, let's start with Capital Fleet. Sure, why not? Look at this thing. It does 3d10 plus 4 damage. 3d10 plus 4. It's 3d8 on a counterattack. It's insane. <laughs> they have a capital fleet. This is the main fleet. Uh, the main strike fleet, I think, is in... Well, we saw it, right? It's in Sigrid in Viking, Viking World. So that is... Uh, Laudice. So it's 103. Yeah, Sigrid, 103. So one zero three. Uh, wow, DJ Sigrid in orbit around planet Sigrid. Actually, it's just in the system, so uh, it's not on planet. In orbit. Alrighty, it's gonna format this. So they're all the same. Alrighty, so capital fleet. This is like a big ass spaceship. So I'm gonna I'm gonna point out here that there's an NPC in the game I guarantee is going after this asset and not in an I want to blow it up kind of way. Just saying. Somebody wants this for their, their own control. Um, so the high beam, I think I'm going to buy several smaller fleets for it. So what's, what's smaller? Um, a strike fleet. Blockade fleets, those are smaller. Eh, I want to buy them fancier stuff. Oh, I also have to buy this. Um, move this over to the asset tracker so we can keep track of it. Insert note. Okay. Um, let's buy them some space marines because, I mean, they got the they got the guts for it. Let's do it. They're never going to have this much money again. So you remember in the episode, I kept telling the players, like, don't piss these guys off. And they're like, whatever, it's fine. No big deal. It is a big deal. It's a goddamn huge deal. So we'll drag that down. Um, Spes Marines. Now I need two more. Uh, I will buy them a blockade fleet, and we'll also buy them a strike fleet. Give them some variety. And the whole fleet right now is in 103. Um, capital fleet, I think, might have a maintenance cost. Yeah, two fat creds per turn, so I'll keep an eye on that. Huge pirate fleet, so this will start at five. Shh, yeah, shit, that's a lot of a lot of fleet dudes. So Saito, uh, fleet captain Saito, probably controls like one of like maybe he controls the blockade fleet or the strike fleet, uh, one of those two. All right, so now we gotta buy them four assets in other things. So let's look at what they can do for wealth. Wealth is up to seven. So with wealth seven, buy them. Uh, well, I think they have a probably a transit web. Be able to move things around. Now they got starships. Starships can like fly around everywhere. A hostile takeover. Oh yeah, they're pirates. Of course they got a hostile takeover. I will buy them that. So they have the ability to use this hostile takeover to attack their enemies. Uh, it's a tactic. Um, I'm just gonna pair it up with. I'll put all their assets in in Laudice right now. Actually no, this is gonna be on their home world. So we're going to say 301, Naomi, Pelasgon. All right. OK, so that's good for them. And then they need how many more? Uh, three. Uh, blockade runners, for sure. Because they're smugglers and they ship things, too. So that's cool. What was that called? Blockade runners? Space fleet. Okay. I love I love this part. I love doing all the shopping. Uh, the blockade runners, we're going to put them in... Actually, I'm going to put them in 704 right now. Uh, 
Then OK. Good, good. And we're going to add in, let's see, two more. I'll buy them two cunning ones, because I think that that's probably, it's good to round them out. So with cunning, they have cunning up to five, I think. Is that right? Yeah, cunning up to five. So I'll buy them. Let's see, is there anything? Ah, SIG transport is good, but I can't. I'll buy them covert shipping. And I'm going to stealth one of their, their assets. So we're going to do covert, covert shipping. And that's going to be an ASA too. So you can see I'm, I'm prepping these guys to fight. Um, yeah, I'll go back and fill in the notes later. Uh, I'm prepping these guys to fight on two fronts. They're going to be fighting Sunbeam, and they're going to be fighting um, Photonhauer, right? So looking forward to that, too. Uh, so I think that they're starting to work to, like, dick around with um, what's going on on Asa and, uh, and deal with that. So covert shipping. Um, might as well grab the note while I'm still doing this. OK. And I'm going to make their blockade fleet uh, stealth. So we're going to apply the color tag to that so we know that it is in stealth mode. And that is the wrong periwinkle. OK. Covered shipping, and we bought stealth, so we don't need that one. Perfect. All right, so badass pirates. <laughs> Uh, let's take a look at their um, their goals here. Their goal is military conquest, which means destroy force assets. So anywhere in the world that they have force assets, these guys are going to go and blow up. Um, so look out, Fotenhauer. <laughs> OK, so let's do the Hovaden Caliphate. So the Hovaden Caliphate, Hoveda is like literally the biggest population in the entire sector, right? There's there's no planet, like, would you like to, you wanna see the spoiler version of it? Let's take a look at the spoiler version of Hoveda. So Hoveda, spoilers, here they come. All right, billions of inhabitants, pre-tech cultists, psionics worship. Pre-tech cultists, psionic worship, billions of inhabitants. So these guys are a hegemon. They're an empire. Um, they have, uh, they're in the Franco system. Um, and I'm just going to have them throw bases of influence onto like all of the nearby systems. So grid 108 is, let's see, 108 is here. They're going to have bases in all three of these systems. Um, so let's jump back over. The Hovaden Caliphate. They are going to have eight in wealth, seven in cunning, and five in force. Uh, I'm going to need to add, God, I'm going to need to add several rows for them, I think. So insert below, because they're going to be planetary government for several planets. And we will get to that in just a second. So planetary government. And also, I'm going to take Theocratic. Yeah, Theocratic. There we go. OK, so homeworld is Hoveda. Um, we can just fill down on these. And we'll talk about their goal in a minute. So let's go find out what they have. Uh, so Hoveda, I want to give them, um, yeah, I want to give them a, a base uh, area kind of throughout the sector. So so that's, let's see, one on each planet. Oops. Base of influence, base of influence, base of influence. And let's see what's on those worlds. Um, we know that originally the, um, uh, what's his face is from here? The new prophet. So that's kind of cool. Is there another TL5 planet here? Is Aldwaran is TL2, but that's fine. They can have a base on both planets. So 108, Hoveda, and Aldwaran. OK, so 108 twice. Um, what's the name of that system? 
Ulimi? Nope. Franco. Franco system. Lando system. Franco's not a system, he's a man. Alright, so I'll. Hoveda, so that's their main base. And that's what, 49 hit points? Because they're big ass dudes. Um, they also have another base, we'll call it 20 on that planet. Oops. Okay, and what was that one called again? Al Dwa Iran. Iran, and then they've got bases in adjacent sectors too. So Mualimi, they've got a base on Kamna. So 107 Kamna Mualimi. And another one. These ones 15. The Faden Caliphate also has one in the Davilo system, which I'm gonna have to copy because I guarantee that's not gonna show up. Uh, Planet Shoa. Ooh, major space yard. Interesting. Okay. So I'll just put it like this for now. And that is hex 106 or 109. Yeah, 109. Alright, so that's just their bases. And they're the planetary governments of all of these planets. So, planetary government, planetary government, planetary government of Oveda, Al Dwairan, Shoa, which I think I spelled correctly. And one more for Kamna. Hot damn. All right, so they control all those planets directly on top of being uh, theocratic. So they're good at defending themselves against cunning attacks. So let me put a note there. Uh, oh yeah, Hovita is on there. No, nope. yeah, Hovita is on there twice, so I don't need this line. Delete row. There we go. Okay. Insert note. Ready. All right. And these guys are neutral. So what we're doing is we are we're jumping up the um, jumping up the scale as the players level up. Right. We're seeing a bigger and bigger area of the world. Um, uh, world in this case being the sector. Um, let me buy, I'm going to buy what I need to buy for the, um, for this faction. Then we'll do a faction turn. Um, so they get, uh, eight cunning assets. One of them is Hova. So they have four assets and then four more, eight total, four cunning, four others. Okay. See what we get. What's the best thing we can buy for cunning? Oh, a panopticon matrix. Breaked AI intelligence into a web of observation. Ha, ah, yeah. Capable of discerning the slightest evidence of intruders, intruders on a world. Yep. Buying it. Bought it. The Eye of the Caliph. I'm literally buying it just because it's the best damn thing on the planet. Uh, so... Like, I can't buy anything cooler than that, so I'm gonna. God, can you imagine what happened? Like, these, so these guys are gonna come in conflict with um, uh, Cabral, right? Because Cabral is gonna be like, oh, did I only give them seven cunning? They should have eight. No, they got, yeah, let's, let's switch it. I want them to have eight and seven. There we go. Um, so, yeah, I want, uh, I want them to, um, it's, it's another dormant AI that's helping them, right? Maybe this is another, maybe they literally have another, like breaked AI serving them and Cabral is going to have to go after it, right? Like think about that. Like, okay, you have a mission, Prosper, go and disable the Panopticon matrix and free the AI inside, bring it back home. 
Um, I don't care about the TL5, TL4 stuff. Like, there's there's all this other crap lying around the, the, the sector. It's just if you want to make new equipment after this, you need TL5 on the planet or to cheat using an asset. Okay, so they get three more, uh, three more cunning. So let's buy them. Let's see, what's this popular movement? Oh, uh, awesome. So a planet-wide surge of enthusiasm for a cause. All right, popular movement is the empire, right? So we're going to have that. Popular movement is the empire. Uh, let me clear the color from this one. There we go. And that popular movement is home. So that's two so far. Uh, I'm going to buy them treachery. So what does a book of secrets do? Psychometric data on influ influential local figures. Well, that's cool. I'm going to buy that too. So they use their Panopticon matrix to, they're like, they're like sort of like an ultra version of Andoni. They, they have like psychics. Oh, this is like a psychic, uh, a psychic uh, surveillance state, right? Like the Panopticon matrix is probably like an insane SciTech AI. And they, they know everything about everyone on their planet. Um, oh God, creepy and awesome. I'm super excited to see these guys in play. Like you imagine like a character like coming from here, like, yeah, I used to be the like, uh, the high, uh, high interrogator of this planet. Uh, yeah, Illuminati, psychopath, 1982 shit. Super into it. Really cool. And Andoni, it's going to make Andoni look like a liberal college. So I'm also going to buy them. Ah, let's see. So they get one more. Um, political blocks. That might be good. I like I like the party machine. It's effective. No, organization moles. Those are better. I'm gonna use these. So they have a hand in all of the other like if there's if there's ever like a an uprising or something, they're gonna just like come right down at half 1982. Yeah, 1984. Thank you. <laughs> okay. So anyway, yeah, these guys these guys did the psychic thing two years before anybody else did. Uh, cool. All right. So that's great. Organizational moles. Those are on Franco too. They got their home planet locked the fuck down. Now I want to buy them some other assets, you know, and they've got, they've got a five in force and a seven in wealth. So let's look at their wealth options. It's seven. Pre-tech manufactory. Yeah. Why not? They can manufacture some pre-tech equipment. You know, keep that keep that robot system working. Functioning pre-tech manufacturing facility. Of course, keep that on Hoveda. Um, I want to add you know, Griffin's hype. Uh, let's add in one of these three, I think. Yeah, cool. And then they can treat all their planets as TL4. Yeah, that one's good. So they got research and development. Because for an empire, it's really important to be able to build your best shit on every planet. And then let's get some uh, enemies. Let's get some attack stuff for them. So they can they can get up to five in force. So I'm going to grab them psychic assassins. Because obviously, right? Right? Psychic assassins. Psychic assassins make cyber ninjas look like Barney Rubble. <laughs> All right. And uh, the last thing I want to buy for them is something that we can use to move them around. Um, yeah, extended theater. So these are transport ships. And all this stuff's going to be on Franco. So they don't really have anything else on these other like crap planets for right now. All right. Look at that, Psychic Assassins. Two very dangerous new factions. So what we're gonna do when we come back, I'm gonna take a quick like five minute break. Uh, we're gonna come back and we're gonna do the, um, the faction turn, which is my other spreadsheet, which is this one. So each faction's gonna get to make an action. Now I'm not going to, uh, I'm not gonna take actions for the brand new ones. Uh, we're just going to 
Uh, we're just going to start with the ones we already have. You know, so the hegemon doesn't just pop up and nuke everything. But uh, we'll get to them when we get to uh, October. So for right now, uh, hang on, take a break. Uh, we will be right back. I'm going to run a quick commercial. And um, then we'll take the, the September GM turn, which I am uh, super excited to do. So uh, stick around for that, and we will see you real soon.